this video, we're going to be talking about Android 10 on the Raspberry Pi. As you probably know, I made a video about this before, but recently, Consakang, the developer of this, has released an update. So I'm going for the normal Android 10, not the Android TV version, but most of the stuff I'm saying here applies for the Android TV too. So as you see right here, November 8th. So it's for the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It's for advanced users, he says. But most of you guys can do it. So here's the download link. We'll get to that in a second. But here's the list of the stuff working and not working. But what got my attention is right here. That this now supports USB boot. But before, it did not support USB boot. So right here, how to boot from USB. So he does give a warning right here that it's still an experimental feature, which I can tell some, but it's definitely pretty stable and could be used for daily uses, in my opinion. And you get better speed than an SD card. So right here, he tells you how to do that. And we're going to go over, over that in a second. But first of all, we need to download it so we can flash it to our Raspberry Pi. So to do that, we're going to need the Android 10 build right here. Here's the latest build. You can just go over to his website, or I mean Android file host. And you're just going to hit cl click the start download. And it's going to search for the nearest mirror to you. And we should get it downloading in a few seconds. And here, mine's from Germany. And right there, as you see, it's downloading for me right now. And now I'll just wait for that fit to finish, and then I'll be able to flash it. I have it re downloaded right here, Lineage 17, Constaking RPI4 image. And that's the one that we want. So first of all, we're going to need to open up Etcher. If you don't have that, I'll leave the link down below. You can install it. It's available for all operating systems. And you can go flash from file and just choose that lineage os one click open select target and this is my usb stick it's a 3.0 usb flash drive sandisk so it does get some pretty good speeds and now you're going to type in your password hit ok and it should start flashing it for us and it gets it flashes pretty fast actually for me so it's done flashing right now, as you see. So I can just close up Etcher, and Etcher automatically ejects your USB drive. So we have to do some more stuff. So take it out of your USB port, plug it right back in. And right, it's going to be called boot. So we're going to have to open that one up. You're going to go down here, and you're going to find config.txt. You're going to click on that. And you're going to go down here where it says boot device. You see there's this hashtag in front of DT overlay Android USB. Well, we're going to take that hashtag, hashtag away and we're going to put that one in front of SD card. So what this does is it's telling the system that we're using USB. We're not using an SD card. So if you, you have to put that hashtag in front of the SD card for this to work properly. So that's good. We're going to go file and we're going to save it. And then you're going to close this. And just click OK. And yeah, so it's saved. If you want to make sure, you can click on it. As you see, it's saved. So now we're good to boot from USB. So you can just eject your drive, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and boot it up. OK, so I'm nice and booted up. And I have the lineage screen right here. So I can just click Next. Click I want to accept the user interface. English, yes. And date and time, you can change that if you like. Location, I'm just going to enable that. That's fine for me. I don't want a password. Nope, I don't have any backup to restore from. And I, I'm using Ethernet, so I don't have to connect to Wi-Fi. But if you did want to connect to Wi-Fi, it would ask you to connect to Wi-Fi. So we're ready, so we can click Start. And here we are, the Lineage Android 10 desktop. So we can ha we have our we can pull up right there. We have our apps that are pre-installed. We have our bar on the top. It's all looking really good. Only problem is we don't have an app store to be able to install apps. So you're probably going to want Google Play on here so you can install all of your favorite Google apps and all the apps like that. So now I'll show you how you can do that. So to do that first, we're going to have to go open up the browser on our 
Android 10, and you're going to have to go to Constacang's website. I, mean, I said Constacang, but I actually meant Open Gaps, sorry. So this link will be in the description, so you guys can easily get it. And we're going to get ARM. The platform is ARM. We want Android 10, and we're going to get Pico. That's the version of Google Play that we want. So we're going to hit Download. And it's going to start downloading for us. Allow a browser to access photos and media. Yes. Yes, I want to download that. So right now, we're just going to have to wait for that download to finish downloading. Okay. So as you see, I have successfully downloaded that. So we don't need the web browser open anymore. I can just go ahead and close that one up. I can pull up and I'm going to go over to my files app. This you don't have to do, but it's going to make stuff easier. So you're going to take this right here, and you're going to paste it where it says Raspberry Pi 4. And when I click on here, it's going to be in our home folder, so it will be easier to access in recovery. So that's all set up, so I can just go ahead and close that one up. And we're, now we're going to have to go into settings to enable terminal and root access. So you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom here, and you're going to go to About Tablet, where it says Raspberry Pi 4. You're going to scroll down, go to Build Number, and you're just going to hit that a few times. And so it says you have Enable Development Settings. That's the one that we want to see. And you're going to go to System, Advanced, Developer Options. And here you're going to have to find Root Access and Terminal. Those are the two things that you need to find. So right here, root access, I'm going to hit that, and then I'm going to hit OK. And now I need to find local terminal. Right here, local terminal, I want to enable that. Once that's all enabled, we're good. We can close up, close out from our settings, pull up, and we can find terminal. So you're gonna, I'm going to allow all of these things. And what you're going to type right now is SU for root access. So you hit enter. And now we're in root access. So what we're going to type is R RPI4. And these will all be in the description too. Just keep that in mind. Recovery dot SH. And you're going to hit enter. And then you're going to type reboot. Now this is going to boot us into recovery. We'll, we'll be able to flash Google Play Store on. Okay, so I'm in recovery right now, and I'm going to swipe to allow modifications. So you're just going to swipe that all the way to the end. Kind of got stuck here. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go over to install. And we're gonna, we're, you're going to find this open gaps arm right here. You're going to click on that, and you're going to go swipe to confirm flash. And this could take a little, a few minutes, because it's going to install all the Google Play apps for us onto our system. Okay, so it's done installing for me, and I'm going to go wipe Dalvik. You're going to click on that, and you're going to just swipe this to wipe Dalvik. And then what you're going to do, you're going to hit on hit this button right here, and we're going to go over to wipe, and we're going to swipe the factory reset. This is just going to reset our system for us, but that's fine because we don't have anything on there. So that's good. So now I can hit this button again, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to reboot, so this is a new addition too. You used to have to do some spe special things to boot back into the system, but he's added this to recovery. So all we have to do is click reboot into system, and this is going to boot us back into the system where we'll be able to sign in to our Google Play account and install software from there. So I'm just going to click on that and reboot into the desktop. So here we are at the Google login screen. So I want English United States. So basically, you just have to set this up like a normal computer, um, Android tablet, I mean. It's going to look for updates, but of course there are not any. And then you're going to sign into your Google account, and you'll be in the desktop. So I'm just going to skip through this part, because you can do this yourself. So, I'm in the Android desktop now, and we have an addition right here. We have Play Store now. That's the only thing that's changed, but it's a pretty good plus. So I can open up Play Store, and if you already signed into your Google account, you should be ready to install software. So I'm going to go ahead and install some software, and then test them out. 
Okay, so I, I installed a few apps with this uh, Google Play, but I didn't install that many. But first, I'm going to start off with Firefox. Firefox is definitely my preferred browser for this Android build. It definitely performs the best, and it's very smooth and nice. So if I was to go to Amazon, it loads right up, and then I can just look at different things, go to different places, and it all just loads up really nice and fast. For other browsers, for example, like Chrome, takes some more time, and they just loop around kind of, which is kind of annoying. But Firefox, I seem to have the group best performance, amazingly, so smooth. So, I would recommend just staying with this. Like, you could search anything, and you should be good. Like Raspberry Pi, and it shows right up as a nice Google search. So, this is my preferred browser for this Android build, definitely. So then, to go over to YouTube performance, YouTube performs pretty well on here actually. So if I was to search for something like Big Buck Bunny, 60 FPS, I could just launch it right up, make it full screen, and look at it. It looks pretty smooth. The colors do seem correct at m the most part. I don't see much stuttering or frames like it's it's really good definitely a good media solution because netflix works disney plus works hulu works all of your favorite streaming devices apps i mean you can get from the google play and install them with no problem so definitely if you're into watching movies different stuff like that this could be for you and then if i wanted to exit this out i could just exit right out and then close it up and it's just super smooth super nice and I do want to say this does work with a touch screen so if you do have a touch screen you could install this and use it with a touch screen and it would work so that is pretty cool the YouTube app is great and then it, I installed a few games like hill claim hill climb right racing it's not a heavy game I know but I, I can say that asphalt 8 and 9 do work perform pretty well and then real racing 3 is actually surprisingly good i just wasn't able to download those right now because of my internet connection but i mean they do perform amazingly and it's so cool that that all of this is happening on the pi and the reason this one performs so much better than the android 9 is it has the gpu drivers the 3D hardware acceleration, which really enables it to be better. So this is like a... As you see, I'm not very good at the controls. Oh, it was doing it for me, that's why. Yeah, so I mean, as you see, this game performs too fairly well. And is definitely playable. So if I was just to leave this game, I could just exit it out right here. And then... I have this other game, but I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to do all these game testing. This was more like the setup video and then a little examples of what you can do on this. But yeah, it's in my opinion, it's definitely better from your USB drive or SSD would be even quicker. So I definitely recommend you guys trying out this method other than SD card because you'll probably enjoy it. So... I hope this video was helpful for you guys, and if it was, please hit that like button, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe.